Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labacan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show and uh, doing another of our In the News segments. Uh, there was some big news out uh, last night. Today is uh, Monday, February the 6th. Last night, there was news out that uh, Newmont uh, is made an offer for um, Newcrest, $17 million deal. I'm going to talk about that today. We've got some juniors with news out. Uh, let's get started with the screen share, and we're going to talk about, um, uh, to start, we'll talk about the um, uh, the action in the U.S. dollar. Uh, today it was up um, and touched the 50-day moving average. Um, it's been up on a couple days now pretty aggressively after the employment report went out on Friday. And um, it got a pretty serious bid uh, when that went out. I talked about that the other day, and uh, I really think that there was more to that news than just the headline uh, that um, the, on the employment numbers, uh, the full-time uh, jobs are going down, uh, and yet uh, it, the uh, employment numbers are going up. And so I think what's happening is people are taking on second and third jobs uh, which does not a, a strong economy make. Um, and uh, I really think the big story is this trend uh, with the 50-day moving average dropping quite precipitously since the November highs. And it's been correcting on the idea that the Federal Reserve is in, nearing the end of their interest rate hikes. It's traded the last couple of days like they're going to get back into aggressive uh, tightening, even though they uh, they slowed down from three quarters of a point uh, for several meetings in December, they went down to a half, and in February they went down to a quarter. Uh, they're nearing their uh, the uh, the peak rate that they estimate is somewhere around um, uh, the uh, five to five and a half percent. Um, and I don't think this changes anything. I think they will continue to slow down uh, probably two quarter point moves left in them, and then they'll stop entirely. And I believe that the uh, they'll be talking about next rounds of quantitative easing in, uh, in the second half of 2023, although their spokespeople say differently. Um, but you look at the housing sales are dropping, um, you look at other important economic indicators, such as the yield curves are all suggesting a recession is coming. And um, I, I think that that's what's in the cards. And that's why they'll end up at the uh, second half of 2023, starting to talk about next rounds of quantitative easing. But nonetheless, over the last couple of days, it's got pretty overbought. And I think as of tomorrow, uh, it will start roll over and um, drop off these fifty this fifty day moving average, um, and uh, and the other important technical indicator is that um, they went through a death cross in early twenty twenty three, so they have a very bad uh, death cross and a very bad um, January effect that suggests that twenty twenty three is going to be a struggle. So these pops that ha these short term pops that happen like they did here and now here um, are likely not to last very long. The last time it got close to the 50 day moving average, it dropped quite dramatically after that. And I think we're going to start seeing that in the next day or two. All right. So then gold was up just slightly today, about a buck ten. Um, it's been on a very good run. Over the last few months, it's been had a big breakout in November, um, has gone through a uh, um, golden cross in early January, a strong January effect. Uh, it has been, as always is the case, and why I watch the U.S. dollar so closely, when the U.S. dollar goes up, the uh, price of uh, gold, oh, in this case, I got copper, sorry. <laughs> Let me get back to gold. Um, as what happens when the U.S. dollar goes up, the uh, gold gets beaten on like it did here. I would uh, show, would point out that it is still trading well above the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. 
and the 200 day moving average looks to get bullish very soon. And I believe we're going to see this uh, 50 days stay quite a bit above the 200 day golden cross here in January and a very strong January effect, um, which portends for a very good year, uh, which I think um, gold will have. Let's take a look at silver. Um, silver dropped down and uh, is now below the 50 day moving average. It's looking pretty short term oversold as it's sort of trading in between the 200 day and the 50 day. Um, if I'm right that the US dollar gets uh, uh, beaten on tomorrow and uh, or the next day, um, we should see this get back up to above the 50 day moving average pretty quickly. And earlier I had copper on when I was thinking I had gold on. Uh, let's see how copper's done. Uh, copper did better than the uh, than the silver price. Um, it's also gone through a golden cross in uh, January, had a very good January effect. Um, it is still above the 50-day moving average, which is an important technical indicator. And I think gold and um, and uh, silver and and copper are all indicating that um, you know the U.S. dollar is probably overbought. Uh, over the last couple of days and that uh, it will correct and these key metals will go up. Okay, so now let's get on to the big news. Um, Newmont confirms proposal to combine with Newcrest. Um, they confirm they have submitted a non-binding proposal to acquire 100% interest of the issued share capital of Newmont. Uh, that's a $17.9 million deal. They'll be giving up 0.38 of a share of Newmont for each Newcrest share, um, which would result in a combined company being 30% owned by Newcrest, 70% owned by Newmont. This re represents a compelling opportunity, as they often say in these things, as Tom Palmer, president and CEO of Newmont said, we and I quote, we believe a combination of Newmont and Newcrest presents a powerful value proposition to our respective shareholders, workforce, and communities in which we operate. The proposed transaction would join industry-leading portfolios of assets and projects to create long-term value across the combined global business. And we welcome the consideration of Newcrest Board of Directors. So then that Newcrest had the, the um, announcement out today that they did receive a non-binding offer from Newmont um, uh, for the 100% of the issued shares of Newcrest by way of a scheme of arrangement, uh, indicative proposal. Um, and of course, they, uh, they well, well, they did uh, mention that they had received previously an offer for 0.363 Newmont shares for each Newcrest share. The Newcrest board considered that earlier proposal from Newmont would not deliver sufficiently compelling value to Newcrest shareholders. And on that basis, they rejected the earlier proposal. Um, so as is often the case in these kind of situations, uh, the company will state that they don't think it, uh, you know, fairly repre represents the value of the company. I did read earlier that um, New New Newmont has um, made statements that they they would look at increasing that offer. Um, probably not talking about significantly different offer, but um, we'll see what happens. Um, why I think these kind of things are important for the entire sector is that um, consolidation often happens as you're um, moving into a more bullish market, uh, in this case for gold. And um, we are, as you can see from the charts I mentioned earlier, uh, gold has been proving since November quite dramatically, had a very good January uh, golden cross in January and a good January effect reading. Uh, and uh, so, but in the, in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't really add anything to the supply chain of gold. It merely uh, enables Newmont to secure their future production. 
one of the things that's happening uh, industry-wide is that the industry is not able to find and develop enough new mines to replace the old mines that are being mined out. Not only are a lot of those old mines being mined out, they've been high graded for a long time. And you can see that in the head grades going down in a lot of mines throughout the world. And uh, in the meantime, we've got very strong demand uh, coming. One of the key buyers has been um, the central banks of the world. Uh, and I think that's indicative of them wanting to have some hardening of their own currencies, um, which used to be the way things were done that, uh, you know, you had uh, central bankers had their, uh, the currency was backed uh, with more um, hard assets like gold. And, uh, but they abandoned that gold standard 50 years ago because it uh, uh, created some discipline amongst the politicians uh, and they don't like that uh, economic discipline. But I think we're having a sort of a renaissance of the gold standard, as you can see by the central bankers of the world um, wanting to own a lot more gold than they have in the last 50 years or so. And uh, they've been buying up a lot of gold. Um, and um, I think that that's a good argument for the price of gold. And, um, you know, as they say, they only buy for one reason. They think it's going up. And I think that's the case. I think they're also concerned about their currencies going down and the effects of inflation um, eating away at the purchasing power of their currencies. Um, and so the, these kind of... Um, events are important uh, from a sector-wide perspective because as I stated earlier um, when you see consolidation it, it, it uh, often is the case that the um, that the the consolidators are concerned about their their por their portfolio of assets and their long-term um, uh, production numbers and by a Newmont buying a new crest, they kind of uh, uh, avoid that problem. And again, it doesn't add anything to the world supply. It merely moves it from new crest over to Newmont, um, but you're still gonna see the same production coming out. And so, um, yeah, I think consolidation happening is a good sign that we're headed towards a stronger market for the price of gold. And um, that's what I wanted to talk about regarding this big $17 million US dollar deal uh, for the proposal by Newmont to buy out Newcrest. Okay, now let's go into the junior world. And um, Faraday Copper has been um, of interest to me lately. Um, primarily, if you take a look at some of these drill results, just the headline numbers are quite spectacular. 15 meters at 10.83% copper, 1.65 uh, grams of gold, 55 grams of silver at their Copper Creek project in Arizona. And then 14 days later, they came out and uh, Faraday Copper reports 33.77 meters at 3.43% copper within 65.2 meters at one88 percent copper very high grade copper and obviously the world needs more copper um, to meet the demands from China and other Southeast Asian countries that are modernizing and um, and then you've also got the uh, demand coming from the the electric vehicle revolution uh, and then uh, on February 2nd Faraday copper announced the 30 million dollar bought deal financing and then on uh, today, they announced that they upsized it to $34.8 million. So obviously those cutting some big checks um, think that uh, what Faraday Copper has is pretty good. I think the same. And um, let's take a look at their stock chart here. FDY, uh, there's Faraday. As you can see, it's been on a very nice run since uh, uh, let's go back to about September, uh, had a significant breakout uh, above the 50-day moving average. In January, it moved above the 200-day the moving average, is aggressively above the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average, has gone through a golden cross in January, 
has had an exceptionally good January effect reading. And uh, even though copper had a bit of a tough day today, um, it was up. And, um, you know, people pay attention when some when groups are cutting these big checks and, you know, you look at those results and there's some good reasons why they're cutting those big checks. So Faraday Copper uh, has been on a pretty good run of late, uh, not just in the stock price, but also in the um, news department. And um, I think they've got a whole lot more good news ahead of them. And uh um, this is one of the copper projects that I follow very closely. All righty, next up is Relevant Gold. Relevant Gold intersects 83.8 grams per ton gold, so Bonanza grades over one meter at their Golden Buffalo project. So uh, this is part of an initial 3,500 meter drill program at that Golden Buffalo project. Uh, located in the company's 15,000 hectare land package in the South Pass gold field of Wyoming. Um, they, they noted that the results indicate that the golden buffalo sh shear is a fertile orogenic gold structure and provides initial proof of concept that the large scale Abitibi type mineralization may exist in central Wy Wyoming. Now there's some... Um, you know, some big, uh, or there's some geological reasons to believe that that Abitibi style mineralization is also present in Wyoming. But what really catches my attention is that this is an orogenic gold system. And when you start tagging into Bonanza grades in an orogenic gold system, it's a very important juncture for a company. Um, and uh, they talked about it representing a discrete three meter shear zone. So these shear zones are the cracks in the earth that enable the, the high grade fluids in an orogenic gold system to make their way up to closer to surface. Um, then they said uh, uh, mineralization was consistently found in individual shear strands within the overall 20 meter wide golden buffalo shear zone. 54% of the holes drilled intersected an anomalous gold mineralization. So it, it suggested that there is a, uh, a significant gold mineralizing event uh, there. Orogenic Abitibi style alteration observed in all 26 of the drill holes. So when those hot fluids make their way up towards the surface with the high grade gold, they will chemically alter the country rock that's there. And that's why you see this alteration. That alteration is why they included it as one of their highlights and that they saw it on all the holes. So they know they're vectoring in. The alteration helps them vector in to where the source of that high-grade gold can be found or at least how to follow it to find the source, which is often much deeper because these orogenic gold systems the cracks in the earth are quite deep. Uh, they can go down for several thousand meters. And, um, and uh, those are important um, parts of an orogenic gold system. So they're giving you indications there uh, that that's what they're seeing. Uh, drill holes stepping out 400 to 500 meter, meters to the north confirm continuity of multiple mineralized shear zones parallel to the golden buffalo shear zone. So you get these secondary cracks in the earth that allow those fluids to make their way up as well. And uh, so they've got an interesting project here. As I said, when you've got an orogenic gold system and you start tagging into the, the uh, uh, Bonanza grades, it's an important juncture for the exploration of an orogenic gold system. It always catches my attention. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm going to be following relevant gold very closely. I love these orogenic gold systems. I follow several in my report, and um, I'm going to continue to follow relevant gold very closely. Okay, another company that's in the orogenic gold camp uh, is Orion. Um, Orion is actually in Finland. And uh, Finland has this central Lapland greenstone belt in northern Finland. These are greenstones are the very old rocks uh, that are continent makers. 
And um, they are the old rocks that you find these orogenic gold systems in. Uh, in the earlier company, they talked about Abitibi. Now, this is a uh, uh, this is in central Lap Lapland where they have a greenstone belt. And uh, at their um, Helmi discovery, new zone of mineralization two kilometers west from the Helmi discovery, they hit 6.25 grams per ton gold over six meters. They also had 1.02 grams per ton gold and interesting enough, 1.84% copper over 5.6 meters, uh, 1.56 grams of gold over 24 meters and Canadian $10 million joint venture budget for 2023. So this is in a joint venture with B2 Gold and, uh, and Orion, I believe it's a 70-30 split. Um, we'll read about that later, but uh, the summary was, as they said, new zones of mineralization two kilometers west of Helmi. Helmi is the major focus, um, and and then they they announced those results. Uh, new mineralization mineralized zones located two kilometers west of Helmi main zone and four kilometers east of Kutavuama. I know I brutal that name prospect. Historical drill holes, including 11.4 grams per ton gold over 13 meters along the structural corridor. Gold intercepts at the western part of the Helmi discovery was 1.56 grams per ton gold over 24 meters uh, from 159 meters uh, below surface. They have Canadian $10.4 million JV budget for 2023. Orion fully financed to contribute the, to maintain their 30% interest in the joint venture. They're going to have an active winter drilling season ongoing with three drill rigs. Uh, results for five uh, 2022 drill holes are pending. Uh, there's a quote from Mati Talika, who stated, and I quote, the discovery of gold and copper mineralized zones of two kilometers west from the Helmi discovery and four kilometers east from the Kuta Vwama prospect uh, demonstrates the opportunity for further discoveries along the prospective structural corridor. Uh, he goes on with a budget of 10.4 million, 2023 will be the another active year of exploration for the joint venture with an aim to expand the identified mineralized zones at Helmi and Kuta Vwama and to make new discoveries within the 331 kilometer, square kilometer property located at the core of an emerging gold belt, end quote. Um, again, when it comes to these orogenic gold systems, the, the structural story is very important because these structures are deep cracks in the earth that allow the fluids carrying the high-grade gold uh, and the gold uh, up towards the surface. And um, as you get deeper into those orogenic gold systems and closer to the heat engine of that system is where you'll get the bonanza grades. So they didn't announce bonanza grades here, but when you keep getting gold in your orogenic gold system, it's a very good sign. And uh, so um, they also gave you some updates summer fall 2022 drill program, new gold zones of gold mineralization. They talked about the Helmi project. Uh, the Helmi is this is approximately 1.3 kilometers west of Rupert Resources 4.56 million ounce Ikari discovery. The Helmi area covers approximately two kilometer strength length of the eight kilometer long sequence of prospective geology along a domain boundary in the eastern part of the JB property, extending from the Akari discovery to the Kutuvwama prospect. Um, Helmi, then they go on and give you more details about Helmi. But again, you know, it's right beside a, uh, a 4.34 uh, 4 million ounce gold deposit. Uh, Rupert has had a lot of success in, in Finland. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I'm following Finland so closely. Well, that in the fact that I know Finland is a very um, mining friendly jurisdiction because uh, I spent a lot of my career in diamond exploration and um, uh, Finland has some important potential 
for diamonds in Finland. It has this, um, uh, it shares a, an important uh, craton uh, with Russia, where Russia has the Grib uh, diamond mine and other um, kimberlites. And uh, so I've been following Finland for a long time. I actually know some people in the Geological Survey of Finland, and it, it, they're very proactive and they're very pro-mining in Finland. And so I've been following uh, Rupert and Orion and another company that I've mentioned several times recently, which is Firefox. And uh, Firefox is uh, well positioned in this area. Really, the whole area is only um, sort of controlled by a a handful of companies um, and Orion and uh, Firefox are the two small ones in the camp um, but they've both shown that they have important discoveries and um, I, I believe that they've got you know Rupert resources kind of potential in them and that's why I follow Orion and uh, Firefox so closely um, Firefox has also drilled into some excellent stuff and um, it's orogenic gold as well uh, and I love those orogenic gold systems because you know when you have success like for example at the Fosterville mine in Australia where they drilled deep enough to get into their swan zone uh, it was a spectacular uh, mine for Kirkland Lake which was already a, fair, a sizable company uh, but when they started mining that swan zone, it made them one of the lowest cost producers of gold in the business. Uh, it drove their stock to be one of the best performing of all their peers and ultimately led to them being bought out. And, um, you know, that's the nature of these orogenic gold systems. You get down to the right level, you start hitting the, the uh, bonanza grades and um, and uh, they can be very profitable. They're not huge ore bodies, but they do have exceptionally high grades. You can underground mine them for very low costs. And uh, when you've got low costs and high grade, you've got high margins, which makes for a very good performing stock. And that's why I follow Orogenic Gold System so closely and Orion, uh, and um, and Firefox are the ones that I follow closely in Finland for that specific reason. All right, now I'm going to move over to uh, Satori Resources. They announced a pretty big deal today. Uh, uh, Rob McHugh and, oh, uh, let me, before I get into them, I'm going to go and take a look at Orion's uh, stock price, um, Orion dot. B, there it is. Um, okay, so Orion is right now trading on its 200-day moving average. Uh, the 50-day moving average has moved up quite aggressively. Uh, it only looks like there may be a, a week or less, maybe a week to 10 days away from a golden cross. And, um, you know, that's usually indicative of some good stuff coming up for the company. Um, so there again, that's my final words on Orion. Now I'm going to move over to Satori. Um, Satori announced that Rob McEwen acquires 37.6% of Satori resources. Uh, they announced that uh, Rob McEwen, who was the former chairman of Gold Corp, back in the day when Gold Corp was mining their orogenic gold system, where they had very low costs, very high grades and was very profitable. Uh, will uh, Rob McEwen will become Satori's largest shareholder, owning 37.6 percent of the company, with the objective of expanding the high-grade gold zones at the past-producing Tartan Lake gold mine in Flin Flon, Manitoba. Satori is proposing to acquire Rob McEwen's 100 percent owned private exploration company, Apollo Exploration that has been acquiring key exploration projects around Canada's largest gold mines and development projects, including Canadian Malartic, Hemlo, and Hammond Reef. Um, upon closing, Apollo will also have approximately 1.5 million in cash and no debt. So let's take a look at Satori. Um, that's a pretty big deal. In fact, I reached out to Rob McEwen 
to see if I could get him on an interview. Uh, so I'm still working on that. And as you can see, the this Phoenix rising from the ashes story started today. Uh, they were really a patchy trader and uh, not doing much. Then they had a pretty significant breakout today based on this news. And um, pretty interesting stuff when Rob McEwen's been acquiring a bunch of uh, projects in that area. And um, Rob's a pretty smart guy when it comes to um, uh, gold projects. And um, obviously he likes the vehicles, the Tory resources to put his private company into. Uh, so I'll, this one's definitely on the radar screen right now and uh, we'll continue to watch it closely. All right, Golden Ridge Resources, they announced that uh, they completed their maiden drill program on the Williams Gold Project. This is um, near Newfound Gold's uh, Queensway um, Gold uh, property in central Newfoundland Gold Belt. Uh, they completed 7,200 meters. Um, and uh, what really stood out to me was, I'm going to go down. Well, first of all, we'll talk about the quote that they made. Um, their CEO, uh, Mike Blady, and his director and president of Golden Ridge stated, and I quote, the maiden drill program has shown multiple strongly mineralized and altered zones within the southern and central portions of the Williams Gold property, proximal, proximal to sufficient gold and soil geochemical anomalies. The 2022 drill, drilling program consisted of 29 holes, which succeeded in testing 10 of more than 20 anomalies that the company ha has identified in the previous two years of work. Additional drilling is required to test the remaining targets in 2023. We eagerly await assays, which we will report when they are received in the coming weeks, rounding out a busy 2022 exploration season. We are also awaiting the results from the first regional geochemical program on the Heritage Project, which was designed to expand mineralization drilled at the Eagle Zone, end quote. So then I looked at this map, which really there's a couple things that stood out to me. This Appleton Fault is an important fault um, because it's where Newfound Gold has found their Keats Main, their Lotto, and Golden Joint Zones, which are orogenic gold systems. So your Appleton Fault is your big crack in the earth that is a crust of fault that goes very deep. These cracks are how the, high, the gold mineralization makes its way to surface. And so what I would point out here is, as you can see from these yellow stars, these are all surface occurrences that led to them making the Keats Main, the Lotto and the Golden Joint discoveries. And then just to their immediate north, there's been some discoveries also where you find um, these surface showings uh, uh, with gold, uh, gold occurrences. And look at this series of gold occurrences right on that Appleton Fault on both sides of the Appleton Fault, by the way, which I, I think is important because most of the discoveries that have been made by Newfound Gold uh, are on the Eastern side of that fault, but they all are also starting to test the Western side and they're finding orogenic gold uh, discoveries on that side as well. But look at how many gold occurrences are packed into this small area. I think they've got a very good chance of delivering some excellent stuff with their drilling results that are pending. And um, that's what got my attention today was that, you know, they highlighted that they completed their drilling. They highlighted that they have some very high grade float samples, assaying uh, bonanza grades, 220, 281 grams of gold in their float sampling. In their soils, they had uh, 1,500 ppb gold. So they've got got a they got a story that's starting to sound a lot like newfound gold, but yet they have a much smaller uh, valuation. Their uh, their valuation is um, let me just pull it up here quickly. But um, uh, there's golden 
GLDN is their symbol. And uh, just pull it up here. So their valuation is $5.83 million. It's a tiny little thing compared to uh, Newfound Gold, which has uh, hundreds of millions in valuation. So let's take a look at their uh, stock chart. I'll be, they're definitely on my radar screen now. And I believe that we're going to be hearing more out of this Golden Ridge because of what they've talked about their completion of the drilling that it's had in the Appleton fault that they have a concentration of uh, several gold occurrences which is the same story that led to newfound gold being a household name in the gold exploration business as you can see in this uh, in uh, November they broke out above the 50-day moving average then they got above the 200-day moving average and um, this news didn't uh, didn't get anybody too excited as it's trading on the 50 day. But what I think is very important is that this 50 day is trending up quite nicely. And it looks like they're only three to four weeks away from a golden cross. And uh, they pointed out that they're they're They got a bunch of pending results. And um that's the kind of thing that could drive that 50 day moving average well through the 200 day and uh, make this one a, a new uh, player in, in the uh, Appleton fault um, area. And so I'm, uh, I'm very excited to watch for that news. And um, I, I think that these guys could be onto something very special. Uh, you know, that, that concentration of gold occurrences really catches my attention. Uh, on that Appleton fault, that's sort of the the recipe for success there. Uh, so let's keep our fingers crossed for little Golden Ridge resources. And I think I'll be talking about them more uh, in the not too distant future. So that's um, uh, all the companies that I wanted to talk about today. Um, and um, uh, there you go. It, uh, there's been some big news. Uh, and even some big news out of smaller companies that I wanted to talk about today. And as always, my shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to do your homework, speak with your financial advisors, go check out these companies' websites, look at their uh, news releases, their corporate presentations, really do your homework. You want to understand the companies you're investing in, and that'll help you to make uh, good logical decisions and I think that's a recipe for success in any sector, especially in the gold and metals exploration sector. On that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.